morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call the meeting to order of the Carson City Cultural Commission. Welcome you all this evening. It's lovely to see the audience grow um, as it does per week. So I'm going to call the meeting to order. And I'm going to ask for a roll call and determination of the quorum. Chairperson Deneo? Present. Vice Chair Ramirez? Present. Commissioner Abowd? Present. Commissioner Leva? Present. Commissioner McCormick? Present. Commissioner Bugley? Present. Commissioner McBride? Present. A quorum is present. Thank you. Uh, next item is public uh, comments and discussion. There's a three minute time limit. The public is invited at this time to comment on and discuss any topic that is relevant to or within the authority of the Carson City Cultural Commission. In order for members of the public to participate in the Cultural Commission's consideration of an agenda item, the Cultural Commission strongly encourages members of the public to comment on an item during the item itself, subject to a three-minute limit. No action may be taken on a matter raised under public comment unless the item has been specifically included on the agenda as an item upon which action may be taken. So our item number three, any public comments? Okay, come on ahead. Yes, good evening. Good evening. Um, I am Patricia Cooper-Smith, and that's C-O-O-P-E-R hyphen Smith, it's hyphenated. And I was here briefly before you last year to tell you that the Russians are coming, and the Russians are coming back. So I will make this under three minutes. Um, the Rimsky-Korsakov Screen Quartet from St. Petersburg, Russia, is going to come back at the end of March 2020. And we are going to be submitting a, a grant application to this body in January. But I just wanted to give a little preview heads up. We've booked the Brewery Arts Center uh, Performance Hall for March 28th, and we're hoping it'll bring in a full house, which would be close to 200 people. And we're also looking to produce a master class, which would be free to students, which was really well received last year. We had about 40 people in the attendance and two or three string quartet groups um, from Reno and Carson City. And we're hoping for a house concert as well, but it's all sort of in the works. And I just wanted to give you a heads up on it. And I think we will be again partnering with the Carson City Symphony, but I'm not we haven't worked out any of those details yet, except for March 28th at the BAC. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Any Keep comments? It in, Keep it in mind. I think it's wonderful. Put it on yeah. the calendar. The, Thank you. You know, this past spring, we had a full house at St. Peter's. Yeah. We had a full house at the State Museum, thanks to a grant from, from Mark here. And um, that was free and a master class. And it was wonderful. It was Amazing, the attendance. So thank you. Thank you. They were extraordinary. They thank were. you. Sharon. Hi. Thank you, Sharon Ross, Capital City Arts Initiative. I just want to introduce our new exhibition in here, Faces and Places. Um, we're, there are nine artists from across northern Nevada. And I hope you enjoy their work. We're, it was great to hang the show. They brought more work than we needed, so we got to pick and choose and um, have a good time deciding what to keep. Um, there's a reception on Wednesday. I know you've seen the show, but you can come back and hear the artists talk about their work. Reception Wednesday, December 4th from 5 to 6.30. And artists' talks, they'll be short, but start at 5.30. Um, all those shows that CCAI does are team effort with the board, and especially with Glenn Clemmer, who helps with curatorial and vision and installation, and so I'm deeply appreciative to Glenn and to the board. Saludos Amigos is continues at the courthouse. It's a major installation. I passed out a copy of the, of the essay. Um, was written by Emmanuel Ortega, uh, Justin's... Um, colleague, and Emmanuel is teaching this year at University of Illinois in Chicago. So we're thrilled to have him. And I was, we had tech problems. They finally got posted on our website this afternoon. So there was a little tech problem. Um, Constellation by UNR Artists continues at the Brick. 
Um, that's our student gallery, and that will be up for another couple of weeks if you get a chance to go by the brick. And I, this was in Sunday's Nevada Appeal. So I thought you might like to take a look at it. Uh, it focuses on, it's a call to Reno Sparks businesses, but I think it applies to Carson City businesses as well. Um, his third um, item on it is supporting arts and culture. And CCAI continues working with schools and students. And that's it. Any questions? OK, thank you so much. Thank you for all you do, Sharon, you and Glenn. It's wonderful. Item number three. Uh, Oh, there's another one. Okay. Excuse me. Yeah. Oh, I'll repeat. I'm Bill Kroll. I'm a citizen of this community. I was called out to come in and voice my support for the International Film Festival, which is handled by the Friends of the Library. I have to tell you, if... None of you have had the opportunity to participate in that film festival. You're missing out on a great event. I can't believe how <clears throat> these ladies have take the time to pick out such memorable films. I mean, I don't think you can see those films without thinking about it off and on for the next several months and anticipating for the next opportunity to see some more. I mean, seriously, it's a wonderful cultural experience for those po for folks like me in this community. Mm -hmm. And with the new seats and everything, you know, I have to tell you something. This is a wonderful venue. Thanks. Thank you for sharing. Yes. Good evening, Ursula Carlson. Uh, I have been an avid attender of the International Film Weekend um, and a participant in it as well. Um, I would like to say <clears throat> in particular that in this world where really people seem to comprehend optics far more than they do the written word, the film, um, these classic um, more, I suppose, in some respect, serious dramas or whether they're comedies, uh, give us the kind of depth that we normally do not find in typical movies that play to popular audiences. And it gives us also not only the opportunity to find context and background for these movies, but also to discuss them afterwards. And we have, in, we have selected both um, the... Uh, shoot, what? Uh, the movies that are chosen for the evening showings, as well as the independent films, um, which have been done by students at the University of Nevada, Reno, uh, or other independent producers of films who are interested in that field, um, to um, to get to bring the community together in a way to discuss issues that occur in. Any of these films, many of which are have to do with social problems, psychological problems, um, life of the elderly, um, illness, um, any topics, but that are that are brought to life in a in a very intimate and personal way. And, and this year, the committee uh, hopes to facita facilitate the group discussions afterwards by having a, a more a free and free-flowing way of discussing as opposed to the way that it has been done before. So if you don't know the way that it has been done before, you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> this will be something new that you can look forward to. Um, anyway, I think it's a, it's a wonderful thing. It was um, Linda Bell Gray's, I think, original idea many, many years ago. Uh, and we have those of us uh, who think that she's a woman of great ideas have been supportive of her, and we want to see Everyone attend. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'm wearing another hat. 
<laughs> That's this okay. is um, Patricia Cooper Smith again, and I'm the president of the Friends of the Carson City Library, and I'm here to support this application for a grant for the film festival. And I'll let I concur absolutely with what Ursula said, and I know with Linda as well when she comes up. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Item number three, possible action. Adoption of the agenda as presented. No change to the agenda. No change. Okay. Approval of the minutes, September the 9th. I just saw one spelling error. Um, on the top, <clears throat> excuse me, on the top of page two in the item about... Um, that starts with Sharon Ross, Executive Director of Capital City Arts Initiative, on the bottom of page one, on to page two. Um, the third sentence down, it says Ms. Ross, but without an E on the end. And she does have an E on the oh. end of her name. And that was all I said. So noted. Any other comments? Changes? May I have a motion? I move to approve the agenda as submitted with the change as recorded. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Would you call the roll, please? Or all those in favor? All those in favor? We're not going to do that? Aye. Okay. Aye. 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 Okay. I don't have a microphone. Yeah, you do. Your motion was to approve the agenda. You meant minutes, right? Minutes. minutes. Yeah, we did the agenda I now. just want to have it for Four the minutes. record. Okay, for possible action items, 5A is a discussion and possible action regarding a the Celebrate Culture CC grant application submitted by the Friends of Carson City Library in the amount of $1,060 for the International Film Weekend scheduled for February 27th through the 29th, 2020. Okay, do we so I'm happy to say, you know, this is our second uh, applicant, and I'm going to invite uh, Linda to come up, and she's going to um, uh, guide you through the application. There has been a minor uh, update edit since um, the commission has received it, and that um, was uh, noted and put in front of you. I think it was a small title change, and Linda can speak to that. And then when she's done, we're going to watch some videos. First of all, I would like to thank Ursula. Um, she just got back from traveling, and she is part of the film team. Yeah. Ursula, Liz Skinner, myself, and Dixie Jennings Teets. Okay. Would you introduce yourself for the record? And I am Linda Bell Gray, and I'd like to just give you uh, a quick introduction to our presentation tonight. The Friends of Carson City Library is pleased and hopeful as we outline for you the International Film Weekend, February 26th, I'm sorry, 27th, 28th, and 29th. It is leap year, 2020. <laughs> We're in our seventh year of presenting three international films, all free to our city and surrounding communities. What a bargain we are. <laughs> we reach between 700 and 800 viewers with films that promote cultural diversity. We present films that reveal our common humanity, as has been spoken to. The film festival fits perfectly this year with the purpose of the grant, which is celebrate culture. With your support, our community gets all this for awarding approximately $1,000 to our project. My fellow film team member, Liz Skinner, will speak to the independent film portion that we show in the afternoons of this three-day event. And we hope that you will read the grant in front of you for much greater detail than I've given you. Thank you, Ms. Yes. Uh, during our annual event in the afternoons, we have screenings of independent films. And they're very diverse. 
We have entries from filmmakers locally throughout Nevada and also from other states as far away as Texas and New York and even other countries. We've had submissions from Iran and Romania. The subjects are also diverse. Many deal with artists in the creative process, uh, from pipe makers of the Great Basin to a New York City ballet choreographer. Also, as subjects are many social and personal issues. Uh, for example, Great Basin water wars, homelessness, aging, gender identity, the Chinese experience in Reno history. I could go on and on. <laughs> so diverse. Uh, a major supporter of this afternoon event is UNR Reynolds School of Journalism. Every year, the Dean Stavitsky attends, and Carrie Barber, who teaches a documentary film course, also comes. The filmmakers also usually attend, and there are lively question and answer sessions after each screening. The questions are great, ranging from the filmmaking process, its technical and artistic aspects, through the inspirations and future dreams of the filmmakers. The young filmmakers love this, of course. It's a chance for them to share and discuss their new creations, and the audience has a unique opportunity to see first-run screenings and interact with creative talent. So this, these afternoon sessions have become a popular and valued part of our annual event. We're happy to answer any questions that you might have. And if you have not read the grant, those questions could be answered by your reading the grant, but we'll be happy to answer those now as well. I think I can speak for all of us that we've all pretty much done our due diligence and, and read the application, and it was quite well done. Thank you. Any comments? Anybody have any questions? Linda, do you want me to play the samples? We now have some little teasers, some movie trailers for you for the three nice. international film fest films for this year, beginning with you Babette's Feast.
し戻さつくよ Come to the festival. Yeah. <laughs> Afternoons and evenings. Thank you. If there aren't any questions, thank you very thank much, you very much. for your time. Thank you so much. So, commissioners, on the um, screen is the allocated amount that this body uh, approved. Uh, total amount was seven thousand. Our last applicant, two thousand, was approved. There's there's, there's the remainder of five thousand. And the um, you see the submitted applicant there for one thousand sixty today. Mark, we didn't. Um, Recommend funding through RAC, the RAC Special Events Funds for the international. They were no, not an applicant. No. Okay. Just trying to remember. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Do you have any further comments on the staff summary that you have presented here? No, all the information is there. It's, it's all there. Any, any questions from anybody? Well, it is your pleasure at this point. Chair, if I could just interrupt. On the agenda, it does say that there will be public comment allowed after this oh, agenda. Okay. Yeah. Before the vote, um, any public comment? Any further public comment? No further comment? Okay. Then moving on. Is your pleasure to approve? Is there a motion? I move to approve the grant application as presented. Is there a second? Second. Did you get that, that Lupe seconded because you didn't have your oh, thing on? Oh, sorry. Lupe seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations. Thank you for bringing it to us. Mm -hmm. Marvelous. OK, Mark. You did such an amazing job. For the Mayor's Arts mm -hmm. Award Thanks. We're gonna, event. Thank you. We're going to, uh, Mark Salinas, for the record, we're going to cover that um, shortly. It's done. I'd like to um, take note that the 11 attendees tonight have put us at a total of 127 attendees of our Cultural Commission meetings for the year 2019. 
And you can see up here, this is a snapshot of the annual report that I gave um, the commission and the board of supervisors. You can see how that's grown since uh, 44 audience attendees in 2017. So those numbers are everyone in, um, in these seats uh, here behind us. Um, an update on the Basin to Range exchange program between Carson City and the town of Tonopah. This was a, a grant <clears throat> given from the Nevada Arts Council challenging urban and rural entities to develop an eight uh, month uh, collaboration. Uh, what we thought of was a cultural swap. Um, um, the images you see here uh, in partnership with uh, hotels and ghost walks and breweries in each town. Uh, we've um, partnered with them. Uh, they were kind enough to donate their services, and we've had online giveaways. So what you see there at Tonopah, uh, that family there actually caught wind of this on Facebook and, um, and won. Uh, so they actually came from, Car from California into Nevada, first time at, at the, in Tonopah. And the, um, the daughter and uh, father you see there, on the right in front of the governor's mansion, they are they won the uh, Carson City uh, sweepstakes, and they came in from Tonopah. So that happened, I believe, in August. Uh, we'll, ha we'll have another one in February, partnering with both the, ho the same hotels, uh, but uh, the breweries, the Sheet Tree Brewery here in Carson and Tonopah Brewery uh, in Tonopah. So it's been a great cultural swap. You see there the image in the center that was our um, bumper sticker. There's a couple of those still at the door. Those were also included in the Mayor's Arts Award. Um, and each, <clears throat> the, the first of each month, um, we put online a digital splice of two public arts in each town, kind of conceptually making a third and new public uh, piece of artwork. Mark, can I stop you there just yes. for a second? How did that grant work? So the Nevada Arts Council put out um, an announcement for grants, and then did you couple up with Tonopah, or how did so that? So that was an inter that was a um, an initiative that they created internally, and they put that um, initiative as an RF uh, Q for any organization, arts and non arts. So there are actually some um, economic development um, agency in, in Gerlach that's a part of it. There's uh, Ghost Hunters. And um, I think Baker that are part of it. Of course, you have uh, arts and cultural administrators. You have some destination marketing organizations. But there was uh, 40 of us all together. And I think I showed a picture when I attended there. And all of us uh, convened. <clears throat> and from there, uh, we were either put in a category of being urban or rural. So we are the urban entity in this. And we partnered. But that was it. The partnership was it. And it, what what this is very different than from what other um, organizations are, are doing. Uh, Rachel uh, Stiff Show just came down at the City Hall Gallery, and up now we have Fred Howland. That'll be up until 2020. Um, wanted to give an update on um, some promotion of Art Carson City Arts and Culture that I've been doing. I uh, was on the Reno Tahoe Tonight radio show, 1180 AM. Uh, with Oliver X. He is a staffer for Art Town, talking about um, the Mayor's Arts War and Dia de los Muertos. And, uh, we also uh, wrapped up our Summer Artist Lecture Series. This was our third presentation, I believe, with a, a sculptor from Chicago and a playwright uh, from New York City from Gardnerville. Uh, Nicole was from the Artist Residency in Gardnerville. Um, uh, the, the playwright from New York City uh, was from the uh, resident artist program in Silver City. And that was a new initiative. Um, I had been asked by the uh, former um, arts editor at the Reno News and Review uh, to fill in for an organization that she's created called Double Scoop. So what this is, it's a monthly convening to uh, discuss contemporary art topics. It could be shows, it could be anything throughout the state of Nevada. There's an, uh, an organization here in northern Nevada and another one in Las Vegas. Um, she had asked me while she was out on the playa if I could um, babysit her new organization. And I was absolutely honored um, because <clears throat> um, this, she gave me the reins on a topic and so it was, uh, discussion was art, what to wear. And that uh, spoke briefly about 
um, the costumes at Burning Man, the costumes in the uh, Georgia O'Keeffe show at the Nevada Museum of Art, which was up at the same time, also with <clears throat> uh, Fashion Week that was coming in to September. Now, um, Chris Wagner, and there she is up there, just won the uh, Micro Enterprise Award at uh, EDON's Lunch and Business Awards ceremony in September, an audience of about 400 people. And it's notable that Mike Kazmierski, the author of this, was the, 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 the keynote speaker. No, or actually, he's, he's the CEO of EDON. So everything's tying in together here, Sharon. Thanks. <laughs> Um, I was asked uh, to do a presentation at the Rotary Club, and this was an opportunity just to show how some federal statistics um, formulate themselves into state statistics that um, inform our, uh, our local statistics here. Here's a good one. 70% um, of people agree that the arts improve uh, the image and identity of their community. These are a whole bunch of uh, statistics available from Americans for the Arts. 55% of Americans believe that their jobs require them to be creative. <clears throat> uh, about two years ago, the mayor asked me um, to uh, partake in the Philanthropy Leaders Summit. This is the second year I've been on it. Um, this is at the Nevada Museum of Art. The Moon uh, Ridge um, Foundation has an uh, entity in Reno and also the same event in Las Vegas. There's about mm, 15 of us on the advisory committee that... Um, host this event. It's very well attended. It's, it's um, The reason why I like it is that it talks about philanthropy and a lot of the keynote speakers are really arts and culture and humanities related. And some of the great data that you can get from, from this is if you look at here where Nevada companies give, you'll see arts and culture 3.6%. So uh, there's, there's a strategy in, in attending and, and supporting these events because if we wanted to approach a Nevada company for a philanthropic ask, we could partner with health and social services. They have a 30% likelihood, right? So there's some strategy and some, some science to this data. Uh, finally, we wrapped up our last series on September 19th. All these were held at the Brick, free, open to the public. Um, was on Courtney Bloomer's show, Darla Edit's show, to promote the Mayor's Arts Award. And then uh, gave a presentation at the Nevada Museum of Art in Reno. And this was called uh, Sweat Equity in Public Art. They had asked me to um, speak there uh, one afternoon. It's called an Art Bite presentation between uh, 12 and 1. And I discussed um, sweat equity. It was a term that I learned working for Habitat for Humanity. Um, and uh, this image here is my non-for-profit in New York, Seven Train Murals. <clears throat> and so it was all volunteer-made murals. We painted about um, 7,000 square feet in three years of public art, public space, revitalizing vacant or vandalized uh, spaces. This is a collaboration with the Boy Scouts, and those are the moms that jumped in. Thank goodness. <laughs> Another presentation uh, was at the N N U uh, University of Nevada Reno School of Art for their uh, art writing symposium. I was invited there by um, a fellow Nevada Humanities Award winner, and uh, it was a two-day affair. And these are all opportunities to get Carson City. Uh, you know, just as uh, we've been trying to enlarge in the footprint, I spoke about this at the Mayor's Art Award, uh, trying to enlarge Carson City's footprint of getting Carson City art up and out into Reno or up at the airport, up and out into Tonopah. So too am I sort of taking, um, taking the good word on the road about what we're doing, so to speak. Uh, images from the second annual <clears throat> paint, sip, and chip. This was held at the, um, at the Nevada State Museum here in, in Carson City. Uh, as you can see, uh, much more spacious than the Adams Hub last year. <clears throat> so here are some stats on this. So the first year we had uh, 98 people. This year we had 73 people. But there are some, um, there is some data that we walked away with. 96% was new audience. And there was a lot of parents and teachers, lots of uh, uh, students still in their uniforms. Returning audience, only 4% but they're all local adults. Many read about it in Carson Now, a Facebook event page, and then we learned about a local 
Carson City um, uh, parents page that none of us knew about. Uh, the Nevada's Artists Association, they donated volunteer hours in helping me set up and helping me take down. There's actually a, a federal statistic to volunteer hours, and that's, that was a total. Uh, they also uh, kindly offered uh, more money in buying all the soda and all the candy and all the chips. The Carson City Library also upped their contribution by 20% in helping uh, fabricate these skulls. We asked for more this year, as well as the Boys and Girls Club, who primed and painted them. And then, of course, that new regional partner, Killer Salsa, who donated two gallons of salsa uh, to the event. So I think there was a lot of... Uh, um, um, uh, internal um, infrastructure and in, in making this. I think the third year is going to be a super home run. I think it's. I think we're going to get those numbers, and we kind of got our act together now and knowing how to make it happen. I think the next year will be great. And then, of course, um, I had the pleasure of um, uh, finding jurors every year for uh, the altar competition at the um, at the state museum, and the two. Um, Individuals in the center there represent the Boys and Girls Club. I invited them this year. I've asked them in the past to decorate a skull to give to a juror as a memento, as a token gift. I invited them to actually be there to give it. Lieutenant Governor Kate Marshall was kind enough, uh, who I um, approached at the EDON uh, Awards uh, luncheon, um, begged and, and pleaded her to, uh, to be one of our jurors, and she agreed, as well as Maxine Cortez, from our courts here in Carson City, and Daniel Gonzalez from our sheriff's office. He's not in that picture because he got a call then and there and had to rush out the door. But I thank all three of them for their help. And that's Myron Friedman on the far left. <clears throat> Some images of the altar competition and um, the next day, the event itself. Always held outdoor this year with a stage. Um, and while I'm on this topic, I actually have um, today, I received uh, the um, final report for this applicant. So what I can do is pass this to you. I've already submitted to the clerk as late um, material. But we're, we're trying this out for the first time. So I'm going to, when I get applicants' final reports, we're going to put it on the agenda. So um, when I get the Friends of the Library's final report, it'll be on the agenda for when, you know, whenever they execute the event. So um, let me hand this out to you now, and then we can review it after I've gone through. Sorry, I should have passed this out earlier. We'll review this once I'm done with this PowerPoint. <laughs> and I'll leave the rest um, at the door. Okay, thank you for that. <clears throat> uh, this year, I put uh, in the budget to hire a photo booth. And so here are some pictures from the photo booth. The photo booth was there the evening of the altar competition, and then the next day, all day. For, so they were there Friday night and, just, and Saturday. Um, attendees were able to get a actual printed film strip, as well as email it to themselves. Um, we created a bilingual photo waiver. So the city owns all these images. There's about 2,000 of them. But the great part is that we can start creating a library um, of our efforts. We could use this to promote next year's and so on and so forth. So Pictures um, worth a 1,000 words. Those are great. Yeah. The evening before the Mayor's Arts Award, uh, Melissa Malero Moose, who was the commissioned artist to make those awards, was at the uh, University of Nevada Reno's Lilly Museum. There she is in the center uh, giving a discussion about her artwork. And um, as I was explaining earlier today, you know, Melissa's a contemporary, Melissa's a Paiute, and uh, the, the, her artwork is made with basket um, weaving materials. So those dots that you see on there are willows. And, and, and those lines are actually actual, you know, willows. And she, so she's making, she's taking contemporary, um, she's taking traditional materials, but arranging them in a contemporary way. And the patterns are symbolic of, 
of masculinity and femininity. And, and I believe the one that we see in the background was actually inspired by the cradle board that uh, she made for her uh, first son. And I believe those, those, um, those, th this type of pattern indicates uh, male. Um, so, which leads us to the awards that, that she made. And of course, uh, the one in the center, the largest one we're lucky to have now as a part of the collection. And as I'd mentioned before at the Mayor's Arts Award, she has a piece on permanent display uh, that's owned by the State Museum, um, the UNR uh, Museum of the Lily, and, um, and I think she's a, a real fantastic um, and interesting artist that represents uh, Nevada. So here are some photographs that I've gathered from the event. <clears throat> uh, sellout event, partnership with the Chamber of Commerce, 125 tickets, ticketed events. Um, uh, last week I received a check from the, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, $585. Uh, so that is um, money that they are donating back. Typically, the luncheon ticket is $20. Uh, they advised us to uh, make it $25 with that extra five coming back to us. So um, we actually have some, some revenue. <laughs> Mark, a question. Uh -huh. um, what was the chamber group as a whole? Were they pleased with the arts award? It, I know that Ronnie made comments that they sure had a full house, that it's not a usual thing, but what was your feedback from them? Well, um, you know, I offered to present, to uh, give her content for a template that was already successful, right? Um, we didn't need to reinvent the wheel. She had sort of what we needed. And so um, she was extremely pleased that, that there would be a new uh, event in their portfolio especially one that the governor and his wife would attend. As I understand it, that is not, uh, that hasn't happened before. Um, and also uh, in some of her closing remarks, she looked very forward to uh, the next one. And there was some, some um, verbal exchange between I think her and the mayor and the mayor saying that he, might, you know, he'd still be around next year to, to do it and, and that sort. Yeah. So I think, I think that she was very, I think that her and she had board members there uh, the executive director and the board members were very excited to to see this um, reoccur. Good. It was well done. Yes, mm. it was. <clears throat> yeah, sure was. Um, this is also uh, this was also the launch date of the first lady presents, um, which you know the the. Governor's Mansion is a, is a tourist attraction. Mm -hmm. And um, while many residents might have already been through there, here's an opportunity for us to rediscover the space. Uh, all the artifacts in, in, the, in, the, in the mansion primarily are owned by the State Museum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so when a new um, governor comes in, the State Museum comes in and rotates items out. Oh. Those are, you know, um, archival. They're mementos of, of history, and I think this is a fantastic opportunity to um, juxtapose some of these artifacts with contemporary Nevada artworks. And so just as I've sort of uh, helped carve out an, an exhibition space in City Hall, I think we can carve out an exhibition space there at the Governor's Mansion. Um, the First Lady Presents, that was sort of my, I thought it was a catchy name, and, and she seemed to like it. Um, this is a statewide um, opportunity. And what I love about it is that all the applications go through our city website. And so all that arts traffic is going to come to us, come through us. And I think that's personally going to help open my eyes to a lot of artists that I don't know. Same here. And then, um, so now that we have this uh, launch, the next step is to put together those three to five professionals uh, who will be reviewing these. And there's a timeline that's attached to this. My ask, my personal ask in, in putting this together was that the first exhibition, uh, and let me just back up, the opportunity is for one artist to show three pieces of art for six months in the, in the governor's mansion. And here are two of those locations. So these images wow. are on the website. The item is, the area is circled. There is maximum dimensions. It's only 2D art wall hung art, but this is right there when you walk in, as the First Lady mentioned, this is where dignitaries go. They have um, 
uh, tours, whoops, tours uh, through there. And I, I just think it's really, really exciting. Mm -hmm. um, not only for us, I think it's exciting for artists. I think in order to help build the economy, there are several ways to approach it. It's from top down or, or bottom up. And I think by giving artists the opportunity to build the resume with really once in a lifetime opportunities, I think that's another way to add value to what um, they present, what they sell. Um, so yes, a statewide opportunity. I'm, I've already received a couple of applications. Uh, I'll be working with um, uh, her office on putting together that selection panel. My ask in arranging all of this was that that first artist that's going to be shown here would be a Carson City artist. And we're going to um, follow the same nominee uh, criteria, an artist that lives or works or demonstrates their, their talent here. You know, with 55,000 people, I don't want to put strict, yeah, that's not how I work, you know that anyhow, strict uh, fence posts up. Uh, I think that osmosis is healthy and I believe that um, um, with that timeline, it'll be, it'll be sort of logistical, it'll be a logistical help as well that the first artist is local, that way we can sort of um, get it delivered and installed uh, in time for mid-January. And um, so I'll be reaching out to the commission. I'd like for um, the, our idea was that one cultural commissioner, as well as someone representing two or three other industries would help in selecting um, the artist. And of course we could um, rotate who that is uh, among you. you. I think it's pretty exciting when the governor tweets, mm -hmm. tweets. stuff that yeah. we're doing. He had a and good someone time. who's in the audience right now. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the remaining pictures here are um, some of the some of the the the, the traction, the media. So uh, the Nevada Museum of Art. There were three. Uh, Employees there, Heather, of course, the keynote, uh, Kathleen uh, Conway there, um, um, D, uh, VP of, of Development, and Amanda Horn, um, VP of Communications. Um, our, our, our own okay. IT uh, department put this out on Twitter. Um, the governor's office put out a, a state uh, press release. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's already popping up in Clark County on Facebook. Uh, in addition, um, it was uh, covered by uh, Carson Now, Nevada Appeal, NBC4 in Reno, Fox 11 in Reno. And um, we also had two more uh, media plugs, uh, one in the RGJ uh, entitled Silver City's Regional Family which mentioned the work that we're doing in, in concert with um, our uh, sister city in the arts, as well as uh, NBC4 covering the um, Nevada State Museum, Dia de los Muertos. So um, a lot of good ink and a lot of good press since um, August. Uh, adding to that, uh, the Chamber of Commerce said that their Facebook posts about the Mayor's Arts Award reached 950 on their um, uh, web page on Carson Proud, another 476, and on Shop Carson City First, 54. So all these accumulative numbers are pretty big. Um, let's go over the, the, the late material I just gave you. Um, that should be considered as part of, part of this um, director's report. That's uh, straight from the State Museum. It's a one-pager of answering the questions that's on our, um, our um, Celebrate Culture application, as well as the required imagery that we ask them to show. And this is a, an effort just to sort of bring uh, those, um, the applicant uh, full circle and the commission full circle together in this process of, because uh, I think before it's, it's, at times it's blind if the commission isn't there and if this information isn't getting to you. And so I'm going to try a little harder making sure that we can thread the needle on this. Just a little request that all of these reports, the dates include the year, because okay. after we've done them for a number of years, we okay. don't know. Good idea. 
Mark, I think it's of note to, on number two that um, the Board of Bray facilitator said that many of the parents had never been to the museum, and this gave them caught. This is their first time, which is great. I mean, that just expands awareness. So it's why we're doing this. Well, and to that note, um, this is Terry McBride for the record. I see their final response about how could your event be better. They want more people. So it sounds like they can handle bigger crowds. They want, they maybe need a little guidance or maybe some brainstorming as far as reaching an even larger, like what you were talking about, a sphere of influence. Mm -hmm. um, I see that they're ready for more people. Right. Yeah, this year good. I noticed that... Um, uh, the DBA's wine walk fell on that same Saturday, and so we reached out to them for some funding. If if the museum's bringing in a thousand um, people, why not have some of the DBA be a part of all this foot traffic? Um, so I'm sitting at the table when I'm putting together my paint sip and chip uh, warm up event, and so uh, Commissioner Ramirez and I are are there present for sort of the entire strategy. And I think um, I think reaching out to the schools and the children's clubs around here um, will be an important factor, an important ingredient to really, we're working on it. Peachies or no peachies, uh, you know, digital or not digital. And um, there, there's active discussion. I think probably the museum will probably put together a little um, post-event meeting where we sort of compare notes and see what our strategy might be for next year. Mark, I was just going to say we did have some comments from parents who did recommend that we go through with the school district mm -hmm. to include the flyers and the peaches. That's mm -hmm. definitely yeah. one thing we need to mm -hmm. work on next year for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, that, that concludes my report and I guess uh, Chair Janeo, we'd be going on to, um, if there are no comments. Mark, uh, do we need to accept the final report? <clears throat> it's not on the agenda. Okay. I don't think we can. Yeah. Going forward, um, I can put that on an action item. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the report. Yeah. 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 And, I guess, and, I, and I suppose once, just thinking of the, of the bigger picture, once that's approved, then check would be dispersed, the invoice would be approved on my end. Yeah. Um, so I guess we're at number seven, if you'd like, if there's no okay. comments. Well, I'm going to ask, are there any public comments in reference to the uh, report we've just been given by our esteemed Mr. Salinas? Anybody want to add anything? Except congratulations mm -hmm. to you, Cindy, and to all the other mm -hmm. people. Yeah. It was yeah. it was a wonderful day and a wonderful time, and and uh, it was well done. And you can thank this gentleman right over here who did a great job doing it. Okay, so let me just comment on that um, amazing topic for the event at the man uh, governor's mansion. Governor's mansion. As the lady presents, I think that's a fabulous topic. So, yeah. good job. Yeah. So now we're at item number seven. Um, commissioner reports and or comments. Anyone want to add anything about your august groups and what you're doing? I'm just going to put it out there that the Greenhouse Project is uh, seeking flower basket sponsors. This is a break-even scenario for the Greenhouse Project. It's our give back to the community. But without sponsorships, we can't have the flower baskets that adorn downtown. Um, we have about 58 baskets left to get sponsored. Um, by January 1, they'll go up $50 per basket. Believe it or not, with this cold as it is now, we are planning for planting. And so that starts January 1. So um, please get your sponsorships in. Go to CarsonCityGreenhouse.org. There's a form that you can download and send in. Thank you. I do have um, the Posada celebration. This is our third. For the record. I'm sorry. Oh, for the record. Lupe Ramirez. Um, so we are having a Posada celebration at WNC. I'll pass some flyers for you guys to see. Um, it's on December 14 
from 12 to 3. It's a free event for the entire community. We are going to be serving free um, Mexican food, uh, traditional food that is served during the holidays, pozole and tamales. Yes, so, um, so we definitely encourage the entire community to join us. Uh, we're going to have folkloric dancing, piñatas for children and for adults, I must mention that. So we hope oh. that we have a good turnout. So again, everyone is invited. Thank you. Are you going to be able to announce this? How, how are you going to get it out to the public so you can get more people? We are going through the um, Carson City School District and putting them on the PGs. So that's definitely one way to reach out everyone. Okay. Anybody else? Eleanor? <clears throat> okay, first, um, Mile High Jazz Band has, on December 10th, Night Lights. It's jazz and poetry at Kama Coffee, mm -hmm. and it will be a lot of fun. I'll pass. I'll just give it. I don't think I have enough for everyone. And the Jazz and Beyond group is starting to meet in January for planning for August. And one of the things that will be expanded this year is the Open Studios Tour. It was one day, and it will be two days in August. So that's mile high. And for the um, Carson City Symphony, we have selected three winners for, for our scholarship. <clears throat> they haven't been informed yet, so I won't give the names. Mm -hmm. But they're Carson City students or students who study in Carson City nice. and live nearby. And they will be presented with their awards at the December 15th concert of the Holiday Treat. It's the 36th annual nice. performance of this concert. The, they'll be they'll be informed before that, so they will be there to be recognized by the community. And this concert on December fifteenth has the orchestra, the chamber singers, and the Victorian dancers. Mm -hmm. So this one will be fun too. And the Symphony Association has seven events coming in December, so I'm not going to announce them all, but you can look online and find out about them. Wow. Sweet. Wow. Okay. I just want to add, um, saw a production of Matilda, and we have funded, oh, it was extraordinary, extraordinary. And boy, I tell you, I wish there was more information out there about it, and it, it was don't pass it up. And I think we have the Nutcracker coming Mm -hmm. relatively soon, do we not? Yeah, right after, right after Thanksgiving. Commissioners, if I could just add one more uh, event. Um, I got an email, which I believe I forwarded to you, on December 17th, the Stewart Museum soft opening yeah. is going to be from 3 to 6 p.m., and I think that's going to be, um, as you know, um, it's one of the pillars of our cultural community. And that's they're going to be opening up the doors for their new museum. Nice. Uh, so if it's all possible, I'd It'd be great to, to 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 attend. Yeah. Okay. I think you wanted to say something. Yes. So this is uh, Commissioner McBride for the record. I was um, curious to at least throw this out for the other commissioners to consider. I suppose we can discuss this at our follow at our next meeting. But um, I was wondering if it would be a good idea to have a joint meeting with the Culture and Tourism Authority at some point in the near future to put our heads together and work together to figure out the 1% room tax and if it's going to be extended or not, as, uh, maybe as a, um, a gesture of friendship or collaboration or cooperation or whatever. And I know I think it would probably have to be a special meeting. Um, otherwise, like either either one of the commission or authorities or our commission's meeting schedule will get, you know, scrunched. So I don't know. I just want to throw that out there and see if that's a possibility. Terry, we've already had some meetings yeah. with regards to this, mm -hmm. yeah. and it's being addressed okay. and um, in a method that 
works for the CTA. Okay. Yeah. So um, I think I don't. I can't really say much more than that. But that they are addressing it, and there's a plan working forward to try and get the get the word out. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Mark, do you want to have a time comments? frame? Have they given you any kind of time frame, like in the spring? And okay. Yeah. Okay. And so, when will that be available for the public to know? Um, I I met with um, the CTA. And our um, our next step in tandem is actually gathering data and statistics, okay. and so um, mm -hmm. uh, they're waiting for me to um, gather all the data and statistics and and just present sort of um, a thirty thousand foot view of um, what um, they what um, they might be interested. And expounding upon, I mean, I can provide data from 2016 when I got here, but I don't know where exactly. I need some help on exactly fine tuning um, yeah. what information is needed, and then once that information is gathered and collected, to determine um, how uh, what does that look like? Is it yeah. a PowerPoint? Is it is, is it in person? Is it a uh, coffee and donuts type thing? And so, um, yeah. It, it, I'm, it's on my to-do list to sort of um, put those things, to put those uh, that data and those notes together, and and, and, a, and a lion's portion will be from what we've seen here and what's been shared. Yeah. As yeah, you'll reports. reach out to um, organizations that put on events, cultural events, like if if they want attendance numbers, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what that's the kind of yeah. thing we can provide. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Okay, for, great. For data. Okay, thank you. Yeah, any way we can help. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I know that they were invited to the mayor's awards, I think, uh, and the hotel operators, did the word get out to all of them? Um, the, the invitation was forwarded to um, the CTA board received it the same day that this board received it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. two uh, board members from the CTA were present at the... Mayor's Arts Award. Okay, yeah, see, that's good. That opening up the lines <clears throat> of communication, I think, is really important. And they are well aware, that board, of our interest and our feelings about continuation of what we are all trying to do for Carson City and the community. Yeah, well, I mean, it gets down to economic development. I mean, dollars, if we want to go there. Yeah. You know, we could have economic development gurus come in and give us a presentation on, you know, how a thriving arts and culture environment grows the local economy. Right. There are professionals. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've mentioned American for the Arts. It's the advocacy group of the National Endowment of the Arts that Congress created in 65. Yeah. And they um, actually, um, a lot of the screenshots from the Rotary Club was information mm -hmm. like that. And it's uh, everything from humorous, as, did you know 55% of people sing in the shower? To, yeah. uh, <laughs> did you know that 20% uh, of people who are in, uh, who are arts um who participate in the arts are more likely to vote. So there's a lot of great data and out there, and that might be an, an option too. I think once we see how, see what information I can collect. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's future items we will be discussing. Okay. Any well, your future agenda item that certainly is one that you know will be addressed. Karen. Um, the other one I'd like to um, talk about is just w where we are with our public arts policy. Just see what where that stands at this point in time um, there are no new uh, additions to the public art policy um, the first um, I think six chapters was presented in yeah. April to the Board of Supervisors um, and in reading that there are um, uh, aha moments updates just in the past six months that I could go back and find to it it's an evergreen process um, but I think um, I think I think the bones are, are there. Uh, it's, it takes a lot of dedicated time to sort of uh, focus on all of these scenarios, and we're actually living these new scenarios. Uh, so it's a, it's it's a challenge, um, but it's going to be uh, custom made, and of course, it's going to have to go through all the um, other all the other departments because they're going to put eyes on it and. 
Parks and Rec's perspective in public works and um, in finance and all these other um, departments that we're going to interface with at some time might have uh, eye openers for us as well. So that is uh, that's a, a long term project that it's always um, on my mind. Well, and I think that's an important piece. Um, the other departments and and what what facet they play in this as well, and how that's all going to interact. So maybe at some point it's just it, it's an update on who has weighed in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Public art. Yeah. They will be coming. Okay. Upcoming meetings and events. Is there anything that you want to share with us about meetings? I usually Mark? have our next meeting under this uh -huh. um, portion of the agenda. I'm going to be taking some time off in December, January. And as that affects um, the preparation and to Granicus for meetings and stuff, I'd propose, um, if it was available on the commission, um, January 27th, uh, it's a Monday night at 5.30. I checked with uh, Parks and Rec, and this room is available. I wanted to okay, pitch that, that as a... Does that work for everyone? Yes. Okay. So noted. So, okay, so the mo January 2020 uh, first meeting of the year will be uh, Monday, January 27th, 5.30, here in the Sierra Room. And then going forward, our typical second Monday of odd months. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'll remind the commission, as per um, uh, the municipal code, that the commission is charged with voting for uh, a chair and vice chair every year in our January month. Okay. Yep. That comes to me. Do. Okay. And we will do. So finally, any, any public comments on the evening on what's been discussed or questions? There's a three-minute time limit. I don't see anyone who's wanting to stand up to do that. But I, I have a couple of uh, questions and just a, a, a question to our two young uh, commissioners. How's it worked for you so far this year? Have you enjoyed your time? And it's it's been a... A session for you to learn? Yes, very yeah. enjoyable. Yeah. Absolutely. I think the, the opportunity to come up here and uh, learn so much more of what goes on down here at the local level is great. I mean, you can see on TV or anything like that what happens in the state or even nation nationwide level, but locally here you really get to see all the faces and characters of everyone who really makes the gears turn around here. Yeah. It's especially fun time. Uh, you know, wheels are turning a little bit locally and changing and uh, I think expanding, certainly, uh, in a very healthy way. It's wonderful. Allah, I think it's so important for us to have your input mm -hmm. and your energy and, and seeing it from a perspective that's new and different in some ways from others of us. And having said that... So we have holidays coming up at Thanksgiving. Uh, and, and the holiday season is, is coming up for all of us to be safe and healthy and enjoy. Wishing you all the very best. Having that said that, there's a possible action to adjourn. I move to adjourn. <laughs> Is there second. a second? <laughs> and thanks to Mark, and thanks to Sharon and Cindy, and all the good works you've done this past year. It's been wonderful working with you. We are adjourned. Okay.